Hello everyone. In this introduction to C-sharp video, we are going to explore if statements. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So if you recall, in the last video, we introduced these lines here, which were known as variables. We can now use these variables to create an if statement. Remember these things here? These were methods. Let's revert these to their original form. And now in the method called start, in this case, void start, let's introduce an if statement. Now an if statement is a way of detecting if something could be true, if something could be false, if something is equal to something, or if something is not equal to something else. So, for example, we can have if after we've typed if, we do need to put this in parentheses and we can put anything which could relate to some of our variables that we've introduced. So let's say whole number equals, and I'm going to stop there and I'm going to explain why we have used double equal sign there. When we are creating an if statement, we need to put double equals because we need to check. When we use a single equal sign, it means we are stating. A double equal sign means we are questioning. And we are questioning at this point because we are checking if something is equal to whatever we want it to be. So in this case, we have to use a double equal sign. Let's say if whole number is equal to zero, and then we can close that parentheses there and then open the curly bracket and hit return, we can now treat this a little bit like a method to say that this section of code between those two curly brackets will run, providing that this statement is true. So in this case, if whole number is indeed equal to zero, then whatever we place within this section here will run via code. So we could then say decimal number equals 1.1 f with a semicolon at the end and i'm going to stop there and i'm going to explain why we use f there so when we created that variable and it was a float it's a decimal we have to put f after the number just so as the script recognizes that it is indeed a decimal number it's pretty standard whenever we code in this language so i wouldn't worry about it being a bit strange in any kind of way it's something you will eventually get used to so what we've said here is that if a whole number is equal to zero, we are setting our decimal number to 1.1. And here we have used that single equal sign because we are stating something. We're not questioning something. We're telling it that it is indeed 1.1. Let's try a different type of if statement. Let's try if uh, my bool equals true. So we've used the same logic there. We've put what we want to check in brackets, and then we've put the curly bracket, which will allow us to execute code if that condition is true. So we can say my new string equals hello. And you'll notice there that we have put hello in quotes because that is indeed a string. When something is highlighted in this case, dark red or a brown color, it means it's representative of a string, so text. And once again, it follows the same logic as we've used in this if statement. Now let's explore an if statement where we can check if one or the other is correct. So we can use the same kind of logic again, but slightly extend the code inside those brackets. So if, once again, in brackets, whole number, is equal to zero and now what we do is we use the double bar symbol so we can type double bar now for those of you who aren't quite sure what a double bar is on a standard keyboard it is the key next to the z or z if you hold shift and type that that is a bar so we need double bar there if you're on a mac it's usually the key next to the bottom of the return key and just above the shift key. So that symbol there basically means or in this case. So let's have 
my bool equals true. And then we followed the same principle again. We close that out with a bracket and open this section with an open curly bracket. And then in this if statement, we can place something in here to say my new string equals hello again. So once again, we can see here that if the whole number is equal to zero or my bool is equal to true, then we execute this line of code. So now let's try an alternate method. Let's say if whole number equals zero, and now we can use the double ampersand. And that basically means and in this case. So let's also put my bool equals true close that out with a bracket and then open the curly bracket. We are basically saying now that if whole number is equal to zero and my bool is equal to true, then we can execute the lines of code here. So my new string, let's have this equal to goodbye. So these are relatively simple if statements and most of the time these will suffice in almost any kind of code. There are variations of this when we have to use, for example, greater than or less than, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And we can just substitute one of these equal signs for those lines. So if we have whole number greater than zero, whole number less than zero, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So you just need to make a combination of whatever you want it to be. Alternatively, you can also have not equal to, which is exclamation mark and equals. So you can have all the variants there, equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Those are all the logic gates that you would ever need within an if statement. And you can expand these as much as possible. You can also nest various if statements as well. For example, if we were to take this one here and say, if whole number is not equal to zero, then we run this line of code, but let's also put another if statement inside there. If my bool equals false, then we can execute the lines of code once again. So we've opened a curly bracket there. This is our line of code to execute. So if we go below, close the curly bracket and you can see it automatically indents to where it should be. And you can see all of these lines follow the brackets so you can track whereabouts each line of code begins and ends within certain sections. So that concludes at least simple if statements and a bit of modification on all of these if statements. You can create some very long-winded um, statements here, but ultimately you'll probably never need to use much more than any of these if statements right here. Don't forget, please subscribe. It really helps me out and that notification bell definitely does help me out. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.